takes a huge overall lead. He finishes seven minutes, 43 seconds ahead of Fuente. And Fuente has to yield the pink jersey. Simplemente que ayer me encontraba con una confianza en mí como jamás había visto. As a matter of fact, I was confident I was going to win this stage. I even asked my teammates to force a really fast pace. When we got to the feeding station, I didn't want anything. I wasn't the least bit hungry. Suddenly the Multani and Bianchi teams attacked and I had nothing in reserve. I'd simply eaten too little. It took my last ounce of strength to get to the top. After that, thank God, it was downhill, and I coasted to the finish. It was a disastrous mistake. These are the terrifying Trecime di Lavaredo. The Dolomites, well, I suppose all mountains, are among the most beautiful things in nature. But for us cycling pros, they are the ultimate test. We're afraid of them, really scared. We start getting nervous days before the tougher mountain stages. And this morning at breakfast, each one of us is trying to hide his apprehension. We can already feel the cruel punishment ahead of us. We're all asking, am I going to be able to stay with the leaders, get to the top, among the first? The question haunts all of us. You shouldn't over-dramatize sport, but here in the mountains, words like torture and pain are not out of place. This is where you reach the limits of endurance. The riders are coming up now to the start, and everyone in the pack and in the crowd knows that today is a very special day. The 20th stage, the climax of the Giro. Three difficult mountains in one stretch. Monte Rest, 3,420 feet. Paso Mauria, 4,209 feet. And finally the supreme test, 7,800 feet up the Trecime Road. The winner here carries off the most coveted mountain prize, the Chima Coppi, named after the great racer Fausto Coppi, and worth £4,000. We're between the Paso Mauria and the start of the final climb, and Fuentes making a break. Here, on this endless, inhuman ascent, up the Trecime, lies his last hope of rectifying his mistake at San Remo, of making up the time he lost there, of snatching victory in the Giro. This is the Spaniard's last chance. On Monte Generoso, he recovered over two minutes. On the Colle di San Fermo, it was only 30 seconds. In Sella Val Sugana, he gained not one yard. Nevertheless, he has made good more than two minutes. His deficit is now five minutes, nine seconds. Can he succeed in one great burst in making up this time, in closing the gap? Fuente has shaken off the chasers and is approaching the last big climb. mountain stages, particularly when I'm giving everything I've got, I'm very afraid of cramp. I always think of Monte Carpegna a couple of years ago. Even though I had a lead of nine minutes over Eddie Merckx, I decided to attack and lost the lot. The reporters really went to town about me. The 
truth was that I'd got cramp. Cramp is an invisible wound. You can't imagine what it's like unless you've got it. But the pain is dreadful. It's so dreadful you just don't want to go on. But you have to go on. One night when I was dropping off to sleep, I started thinking how lovely it would be if some reporter suddenly got cramp in his fingers in the middle of writing his article about me. But he couldn't just stop. He had to go on tapping away at his typewriter with his agonizing cramped fingers, just as we have to ride on. If they went through that, I think some critics might write differently about us when we're in trouble on the mountains. Fuente is still out on his own at Lake Misurina and is beginning this critical climb up the Trecime de Lavaredo. The first bunch, led by the schoonmarker, the faithful lieutenant of Eddie Merckx, with Merckx just behind, are 40 seconds back. And the little Spaniard is increasing his lead now as he starts up the big climb with five miles to go and all uphill. Chasing Fuente is now 45 seconds behind. Merckx is in the lead of it, then number 11, Gimondi, and number 132, Baron Kelly. 20 seconds further back, it's Tino Conti of the Zonka team, and he's followed up by Francesco Moser of Philotex, this young Italian hope who they reckon will take over from Gimondi himself. mountain specialist is very hard. Not that I'd rather be anything else, because I don't think you can become, well, let's say a better human being without effort. You can beat the problems of life much more easily if you've met hardship. It sometimes looks as if the first rider to the top has done it fairly easily. You tend to feel more sorry for the men who've knocked themselves out to make the climb at all. But believe me, to be quicker than the rest, and in particular to be quicker than the other stars, involves a lot of pain.